Hello, and welcome to this month's episode of Odds and Ends. I am Carl Keith, uh, Montgomery County Auditor. I serve as your host. Uh, this is a program uh, from uh, sponsored by the Montgomery County Auditor's Office. It's a, an initiative to provide the public some information and, uh, in a format that we hope is engaging and interesting for people, kind of provide some information about uh, people and activities going on in our community, both in county government and also in the community at large. And uh, we're happy to have with us today uh, someone from the community at large. Uh, Billy Duncan Hart is, the, is a local realtor and is uh, currently serving as president of the Dayton Realtors. And so thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thank and, you for uh, having me. You, uh, you've had a, a long career in the real estate profession. And why don't you tell us a little bit about your career? I have. Uh, so I started off in real estate at the uh, very young age of 19. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked for... That, you uh, know, I started out as a county auditor. It's a very young age of 19. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you Daytonians may remember uh, that we had a uh, um, company called Troutman Enterprises here. And um, the um, part of what they did were they were on uh, Warner Brothers Records. They were R&B artists, Roger Zapp. And they also were in the um, building in the Trotwood area, Sycamore Woods. So I worked for them. Um, I did not know that. How yes, interesting. Yes, okay, they, yeah. I, at 19 years old, I worked for them and I would show a lot of their new constructions uh, that they built in Trotwood. But and you never, you weren't part of the band. I was not part of the band, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. Um, and uh, they got my feet wet in real estate. And then I officially got my real estate license when I was 24. And Very good. Almost thirty years in it. Wow, and you're you're an associate with um, Cold Coldwell Banker. Coldwell Heritage. Banker. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you have a specialty or anything? Or um, I deal a lot with luxury homes at this point in my career, and um, I deal all over the Miami Valley. I'm a, a Daytonian, but um, I'm really specific in the Centerville, Kettering, Springboro area. Okay, okay, and you enjoy it. I do. Again, I you've do. been at it a long time. Long time. So, um, so you're the president of Dayton Realtors this year, and I'm assuming did you have to work your way up through through you, some chairs to get there? You do. It it actually is an elected position. Um, a lot of people don't realize, but you are elected as the treasurer first, then a president elect president and then past president so it really is a four-year term mm -hmm. and all four of those years you are on the executive committee which helps set the agenda for the board of directors okay yeah so it's, it's you know when you get involved in that it's, it's a commitment it really is uh, because besides your business commitment you, you now you have a commitment to your your professional association yes that is correct um, and I can appreciate that I, I served as president of the county auditors association and uh, same thing we had yeah. to we had to you had to be the third vice president and the second the first, you know and chairman of the legislative committee and then right. eventually got to be president and then the past president. I always told people the best job is past president. That's exactly. The best job. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that next year. <laughs> so, so what types of things do you do as president then? So as president, um, so we help set the agenda for the board of directors. Um, I work closely with the CEO of the association. Um, I'm responsible to help implement the strategic plan, uh, make sure the financials, the legislative um, aspect of it is all in in good condition and we support the membership mm -hmm. um, so in supporting the membership we have over 3200 realtors in our area and uh, we support them in educational uh, technical support and also the MLS which is the multiple listing services which is our Bible of real estate sure, that's where sure. all the houses are listed pending and sold and not only do we look at that, but also the appraisers look at that. It's a very important data piece of what we do, and we house all of that. Yeah, the uh, county auditors try to look at that too when we can. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's very important. Yeah. And we also look at your website mm -hmm. for um, things like for sale by owners mm -hmm. that maybe was, you know, maybe a home wasn't listed with the realtor, it was a private sale, and then we go to your website a lot as well to look at some private sales. Well, I think that's one thing that, that I've appreciated over the years is developing a, a, a working relationship with local realtors and with the Realtors Association because, again, you're 
part of my responsibility is to determine uh, values, uh, property values for uh, taxing purposes, and, and you do that by what properties are selling in the in the marketplace. You know, right. what's, what's the market value set by buyers and sellers in the marketplace, and so. Uh, it's been good to work with local realtors to get a better understanding of the market and to share information when we can, mm -hmm. and uh, and so that's one of the things that I've really appreciated. And I think it's I think it's worked out well both oh, ways. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about the market. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> the market is crazy, yes. isn't it? I mean, um, we, <laughs> of course, I've been an auditor now for uh, twenty almost twenty two years. Mm -hmm. And I tell people during that 22-year period, I've seen the market go up, and I've seen the market go down. I've right. seen you know rebounds back and forth, some really, really wide back and forth. Uh, uh, you know, back in the oh eight, the, during right. the housing crisis, right. we, we lost a lot of property value in the county, and now it is just like on fire. Yes, and I've never seen a market like this in my 30 years experience as well. Yeah, it, it, it's it's been crazy. We thought it was back during the the height of the pandemic, or mm -hmm. when we first, when the first, you know, we started closing things down, and and the uh, the governor closed down uh, different segments of the of the economy. Right. Um, businesses were told to close, and, but they had essential services, and one of the things that was considered essential was the real estate industry. Yes, yes. Because uh, it's a big, it, it's it's a big economic engine for the state, uh, and it's an important responsibility. So so the real estate industry never slowed down. No, it didn't. It didn't. I, you know, we- It ramped up. It ramped up. <laughs> uh, we were shocked. We were shocked, so- As were we. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, I'm glad we're not the only one. You know, we have, uh, you know, one, one of the, uh, divisions of the auditor's offices are deed transfer department mm -hmm. and so every property that changes hands comes through there right so that we can keep track of who owns what in the mm -hmm. county so when we were told we were an essential i mean we closed down some things i mean our weights and measures department we closed down uh, i operate a, a license bureau and, and it was closed for two months right. it closed for two months and so there's different parts of the office that were closed down and, and we just sent people home but we were told that that deed transfer department had to stay stay operational. Yes. Um, but but you know we had to we had to stagger staff. We couldn't all be in at the same time, mm -hmm. and we had to have you know part had to work with fewer people. But the transfers never stopped. Right. Never stopped. Um, we were doing 70, 80, 100 transfers a day, every day. Yeah. Uh, you know. We ended up having to bring people in on the weekends and on the evenings. And how do you account for that? Um, it has not been fun mm. being in real estate, in all honesty, the last couple years. Um, you know, it, it has it has started slowing down a little bit as of the beginning of June. But prior to that, I mean, as soon as we, we talked about the MLS, the multiple listing services. So for instance, that is our database of all new listings, all active inventory on the market. So for instance, if Carl, you were a buyer and I, I was your agent and I had you set up on what's called auto email on MLS, which means as soon as a house is listed, you are automatically emailed that property as am I as your agent as soon as it hits the market. The last couple years when the pandemic hit, when those houses hit your MLS, I mean, we had to be busy. we had to be ready to get you in there as quick as possible because they were selling within hours. Oh, yeah. And if we weren't available to get you in there, you were possibly missing out on the home of your dreams or the home <laughs> that you wanted. And it's it's been a very stressful market. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it was nothing for us to have a buyer and this year as well to bid on five, seven homes, bid asking, over asking, and still not getting them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not unheard of at all. But it has started stabilizing uh, as of the beginning of June. Now, when you say stabilizing, mm -hmm. so the number, the, the volume of activity is kind of is slowed down somewhat. Yes, the prices have not. Yeah, what's what? That's what's going to be my next question. Well, what about the price? Yes, yeah, so the prices have not gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. When I say stabilize, what I mean is a new property, a new listing hits the market. 
it is not selling within hours. Right. Um, it may take a day or two. It may take a couple weeks. Um, it is still selling for full price or darn close. Mm -hmm. And some of them are selling for over. Over. Um, it really depends. And it's not... Um, it's not the same, it's not the lower price ranges, and it's not the higher, it's all over the place. It can be the luxury homes, especially if that luxury home has a lot of amenities, a lot of outdoor living, swimming pools and ground pools have been very hot since the pandemic, and houses, luxury living, if you've got a lot of those outdoor amenities and a swimming pool, they are still going with multiple offers and over asking quickly. Now, some of the, since it has stabilized in the last two months, six weeks, some of the, um, some of the prices that are more in the uh, 250, 300 range, mm -hmm. they are lingering on the market a little longer, which is not a bad thing because believe it or not, that is a lot of our, that price range is a lot of the first time buyer price range. Okay. with our new prices and so with them lingering on the market a little longer the inventory is building up better than it was before and it's giving that first time buyer or maybe it's their second home they're moving up home it's giving them an opp opportunity to get into that house without being in a bidding war yeah well we've certainly heard those those yeah. anecdotally we've certainly heard those stories i know people where you know they put their house on the market yeah. and and uh, had offers uh, before the sun went down had yes. had agreed agreed to a price before the sun went down i i know people who before the <laughs> before the 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 it goes on the market and before it even gets public uh, you know they start getting offers and yes. things so but that does seem to slow slow down a little bit and I know people have gotten into bidding wars, mm -hmm. bidding wars over property. Uh, people that work in my office, uh, we have people in my office who've gotten into some bidding wars. The, the, what we hear a lot in the media is, you know, what's driving this? You know, what's driving this? And what we hear a lot in the media, of course, you know, we had record low interest rates. Right. And, of course, the Fed's made some changes to that and has pushed that, those interest rates back up a little bit. Right. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old guy. I remember in the 80s when interest rates were in the teens. And As things. do I. Yeah, you know, and so, <laughs> so, you know, even when we say they're high interest rates, well, 5% is still pretty, pretty low. Yes. It's, it's almost yes. free money. It's almost exactly. free money. Um, but so, so but the, the low interest rates and low inventory was right. what was driving things. But, right. And even though the, in, the, the rate, interest rate may be going up a little bit, the inventory is still at issue, isn't it? Right. So supply and demand has been a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, also, the increases in rent mm, yes. have, have also been driving it up. So since we've been stabilizing in the last couple months, um, the interest rates, I do feel like the, the um, increase in the interest rates may be affecting that first time buyer who, you know, just was able to save enough for the 3% or 5% down. And they were looking last year and unable to get anything when we were in the twos and threes. Now that we're in the upper fours and low fives, it's putting them to, it's putting them out of the market or they're pausing. Sure. However, on the flip side of that, you still have the um, increases in the rent. And I'm not seeing a big difference in the higher price ranges um, it being significant with the interest rate increases. Because as you said, in the 80s, we were in the teens. You saw oh, a lot yeah. of land contracts, yep. lease purchases, because people couldn't afford that interest rate. And 5%, 4.3, you know, 4.34, that's still, or I mean, 4.75, that is still really low interest rate. Really low. We just got a little spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that happens. That yeah. happens. You know, um, I want to talk about this this uh, column that you wrote that appeared in the Dayton Daily News uh, back in June, back okay. at the end of June. Um, and so you do this pretty well almost every week in the uh, write a column? Yes, oh. unless they have something else to go in my place. And um, 
kind of your role as the yes, president, Yes, it's kind right? of my role. So as role of president, I am um, the spokesperson for this year for the association. And um, the news media calls quite often mm -hmm. as well. You know, when something's going on with the interest rates or the market, I've got another article coming out in Dayton Daily this Sunday that is um, a broader article of the economy, real estate. So I wasn't the only one uh, that was interviewed for that. But yes, then we have a weekly column typically yeah. in the Dayton Daily. Well, so, and, and I, I'm a, I don't do the uh, online. I like to get paper. I yeah. like to get the, oh, the newspaper. But I get the paper every every day, my wife and I, and she likes to do the puzzles. So we, we get the paper <laughs> every day. But this this uh, column that you wrote is that home ownership matters for indiv for individuals, but also communities. Yes. Uh, and, I, and I took note of that. And this was back in June, because June is National Home Ownership Month, yes. I guess. Um, but but some of the things that people may not realize, yeah, we people owning their own home makes a difference to that family and to that individual. Right. But it also makes a big difference in the community as well. Absolutely. Uh, can you speak to that a little sure, bit? Sure, absolutely. I mean, not only when you buy a house, not um, you are also doing other things for the community. You are buying furniture. You're buying lighting, flooring, carpeting. There's a lot of money when somebody comes in and buys a home. Um, it, it filters out into a lot of other things in the community. The local grocery stores, the <laughs> yeah. little boutique stores, I mean, it filters out. And we are here to represent home ownership. We are very vested in the community. We want our community in the Dayton area to thrive just as you do. Mm -hmm. And it all filters down to many different faucets of of the area and the community. I told people back again back to when we said that uh, the real estate industry was determined to be an essential industry. Well, yeah. it, it really speaks to that. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a huge economic engine. Yes. Uh, because there's just more to it than just like you said. People, you know, they buy a new house, they want to remodel the bathroom, maybe, right. or they want to put in new windows, and and so it just it just goes on and on and on, yes. and, and and it creates. Uh, a, a big economic force, which is important, but it also brings stability to the neighborhood. Uh, right. You know, when we are doing uh, determining property values, you know, the the percentage of homeowners versus renters in a neighborhood makes a difference. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, because think about it, that renter isn't as necessarily, vested? yes, they're not as vested, so they are not making the multiple trips to the um, hardware store and painting and putting flooring and all of that because they don't own it. And and, and they're not going to don't necessarily plan to be there for right. very long Right, and they're not going to get a return on investment on that where a homeowner is looking for their return on investment. So they're looking at all those things, not only to make their home comfortable, but to make it um, a good investment for later down the road. So, um, <laughs> and we've seen quite a bit of that in this market too, flipping. Yes. Flipping. Um, some of the some of the high prices that again I look in the real estate section every week and, and look at the prices that people are buying homes for and, and then I go check and see what we have them valued for and you know some of them are selling for 30, 40, 100, 200 percent higher than we have them valued. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I look at that and say, well, oh, that just can't be right. There must be a mistake, but. A lot of that people will go, have been going in in this market, buying homes, um, and then going in and, and painting or remodel a little bit and, right. and flipping. You, you right. see a lot Renovating. of that. You, yeah, you see a lot of that too. Definitely. Have you been involved in any of that I, before? I have. Um, I have not. Um, I have been a landlord before. I've owned mm -hmm. apartment buildings, um, and. I love uh, buying and renovating houses or flipping them. I have not in the last few years, just because it's been so busy. Mm -hmm. And um, also it, it's it's not easy getting good contractors all the time. Mm -hmm. And when I'm going in and I'm flipping a house, normally what I'm looking at is a house that has good bones. It's just outdated. It mm -hmm. needs updated new kitchen, new baths, new flooring, paint, things like that. And I wanna do a good job on it. And it's, uh, it's not, easy to get um, good contractors in a timely manner right now because they're all busy. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I have done that in the past. I've not done that in the last few years. My wife and, have, and I <laughs> have had this experience. We own a 100-year-old uh, home mm -hmm. in, in Belmont. Yes, course, I grew up in Belmont. Okay. So, you know, so it, it needs some work. Yes. And, and so we've had 
yeah, you know, trying to find a contractor and trying to find one that, yes. that can respond in a timely manner right. can be challenging at times. Yes. And, so I, and, and again, the, the pandemic brought that on, Yes. Uh, I think, just added to it. Right. In the best of times, it can be challenging, but the pandemic really added to it. So, you know, my role as auditor, um, every three years, I update property values. Yes. And so next year is a value update year. Oh, okay. So it is next year. Yeah. Okay. So in 2023, we'll be doing an update. And and this is not, when we do a countywide reval, you know, we send people out and, and inspect properties and look at properties mm -hmm. and, and um uh, uh, update our property records. So this is midway through that cycle. So what we'll be doing this year is just looking at sales, just looking at what's going on in the market. And uh, we're a little bit nervous about it. You're going to have a lot to look at <laughs> because there's been a lot going on um, in the last couple of years, as you know. So it's, uh, yeah, that's going to be a little interesting, Carl. <laughs> we, from some of my, you know, we not every auditor, not every county does it at the same time. So mm -hmm. some of my colleagues around the state who are doing it now, you know, they're, they're talking about 27, 28, 32% increases in their county. And that's on average. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and again, given what we've experienced here, you know, it does, that does not surprise us. And that's gonna be real dollars that that homeowner feels. Yeah. There's gonna be some shortages of escrow accounts out there. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> it, it's gonna be a challenge. And yeah. again, like you said, you've never seen a market like this and, never. and we've never had to experience this right. in my office either. During the the recession and the housing crisis, when when we lowered values, we'd never experienced anything like that before right. either. Right. Uh, it had happened during the Great Depression, but that was in the 30s, so none right. of us had ever right. experienced it. Uh, and so this is going to be something new too. Yes. Wow. And uh, yeah, so you know, it's it's great that the market is is doing that and is hot and robust, but there are there are consequences to that. Exactly. There are consequences exactly. to that and, and people need to be aware of that. Yes, too. they do. They do. Now, you know, just, even though values may go up 20 or 30 percent, that doesn't mean their taxes are going to go up 20 to 30 percent because there are there are there are things in place that keep that from happening. Right. Uh, so, so there's a formula out there. Correct. That, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there are caps. I mean, there, there are things that, that prevent that from from, uh, you know, happening from that would be a good story to put out there yeah you know how that is calculated because mm -hmm. oh i'm sure we'll be having to having to do that a lot next year <laughs> yes yes well i really appreciate you being here and Thank being part of our me. part of our discussion today uh, uh, it, it's a fascinating it's a fascinating world out there i mean you know until i was in the uh got into i never imagined growing up that this would be the career uh, that I would take. You know, I, I never yes. imagined that I would do that. And, uh, and but it's been fascinating. And uh, again, as you well know, it's been rewarding and, and fascinating. Uh, you've stuck with it for 30 some years, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, and you make a difference for people's lives. Yes. You're making a difference in the community and you get to work with some wonderful people with your inner association. So good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And that will do us this month for uh, Odds and Ends. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you.